Hi, this is Alvin, and today we're going to have another short trading video series. Today I've invited Robin with us again. He's our ADFTV trainer. So he is a very accomplished day trader and he's traded the markets for over 20 years. And one of his favorite trading instrument is the Hang Seng Index. So we're going to talk more about his secrets in how to do this uh, day trading on Hang Seng Index. And uh, we'll be also talking about how do you use DLC, which is a type of leverage instrument to enhance the returns further. Uh, he told me that he loves the volatility a lot. So without further ado, let's get Robin to give us a little bit of introduction about this uh, Hang Seng Index. Uh, why do you like to trade this index that much? So a little bit about Hang Seng Index. So Hang Seng Index is like the key blue chip index like something equivalent to our STI, mm. all right? Uh, and uh, it started off being uh, quite heavily weighted on financial stocks, like yeah. banks and all that. And then, you know, uh, we had the advent of uh, tax, uh, have, we have NASDAQ, you know, um, you know, going up quite a lot, uh, and a lot of tax stocks were in favor. And then they revamped it, right? Uh, a lot of banks, a lot of utility stock, real estate, went out and they, what, they were replaced by uh, Megatex like yeah. Alibaba, Tencent, yeah. JD and things like that. Yeah. So there so, was a revamp, right? Correct. So how did like, the Hang Seng characteristic change after that revamp? Yeah, so um, today people sort of perceive, in, in, in the past they perceive it to be like a brick and mortar index yeah. but now people sort of look at Hang Seng like a tech index yeah. like a Nasdaq more like a Nasdaq yeah yeah so so when you look at so when I trade Hang Seng right I look a lot um, at stocks like Alibaba uh, and Tencent uh, as a bellwether mm. so if those two stocks are doing in the morning starting off well right so most times Hang Seng will do well okay yeah so there is like some key driver in the That's index correct. itself and you will watch this and specifically they are your Alibaba and your Tencent. So. Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so have, have it made the index more volatile after these tech stocks have been added as compared to previously the tech stocks were not in? Sure. Yeah, because the tech stocks are, you know, by nature very volatile. Okay. All right. And um, uh, it's made even more volatile because a lot of these tech stocks has got ADR traded on in the US. So when the Hang Seng Index open, it sort of mirror what happens uh, to the price of the ADR traded overnight. Okay, yeah. okay. So that's a good thing for you traders, right? Because you like the volatility. So by having a revamp HSI index, it's actually better for you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I just want to just, uh, you know, uh, give you a little bit more details on the Hang Seng Index. Uh, so the Hang Seng Index, right, you know, it's got like 70 over stocks. Uh, I just want to highlight the top 50 years, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not even the top 50, if you look, just look at the top 10, right? And you can see that uh, AIA, Tencent, HSBC, Alibaba, Meituan, all right, uh, Hong Kong Stock Exchange, Ping An, all right, they probably take about 35 to 40% of the weightage already. Right, so that is why you know naturally when I look at Hang Seng, uh, and uh, you know identify the bellwethers, mm. okay, I will look at stocks like AIA. AIA is an insurance stock, yeah. right? Although it makes a very heavy weightage, but it doesn't move quite a lot. Volatility right? not so volatile. Yeah, volatile correct. Then, so. Because it's 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 a uh, uh, insurance, right? Uh, and then banks also they don't tend to move a lot. Quite stable. So it, it is left to the couple of tech stocks to uh, move the market. Yeah. yeah. So that's how you arrive to conclusion yeah, that correct. Alibaba and Tencent are the more important drivers of that's the correct. Okay. That's right. That's right. Okay. So these are the 10 most weighted stocks on HSI and uh, you can see them. Uh, Tencent, Alibaba, Meituan and all that, right? Okay. So Hang Seng, they do go through very uh, regular uh, sort of uh, revamps, mm -hmm. right? So currently 70 and by uh, 5th of June, they're going to increase to 80. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? Yeah. 
So I just want to, uh, for those of you who are interested in trading Hang Seng, right? Uh, the trading hours for Hang Seng, uh, the cash index, right? Cash index starts at 0916 in the morning, 916 in the morning. Uh, they break off for lunch, 12 o'clock, come back 1 o'clock, and the cash index trades up to 1600, all right? Not 1625, okay? Mm -hmm. That's wrong there. So, so the cash index trades up to 1600, but the futures continue to trade until 1629, mm. all right? And the DLC, right, being listed on Singapore Stock Exchange, tracks the future index. Yeah. So when the future index stops trading at 1629, the DLC technically also stop coding. They also stop mm. coding for, because the underlying is to stop trading. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, when I trade the Hang Seng Index, some of these considerations that I do right, uh, bear in mind, they are, uh, some, they, are, they are what I would call uh, the rebasing chart or the relative performance charts. All right? So I look at the relative performance chart and typically I would trade the big, the big caps mm. all right, with underlying DLC. Okay. Yeah. On top of the index. Correct. On top of the index. Uh, if I trade the Hong Kong stocks, all right, I will trade the big caps with underlying DLC because, uh, you know, if I trade uh, DLC, uh, my the capital involved is a lot smaller, right? Yeah. And, and if you are good in the technicals, uh, you know when to, when to buy, when it's low, sell in the high, sell high and buy low. Then the DLC now becomes a very good instrument that you can use, right? So, um, so in this case, right, if you look at this chart, you know, uh, the main influencer of, uh, or driver, right, of uh, Hang Seng Index, it's not doing well. Okay. All right? So Which you see that, yeah, Alibaba, and Tencent. Alibaba, Tencent, and Meituan, they are right at the bottom. Yeah. Okay, so which means, right, when you look at this um, relative performance chart, these three drivers of Hang Seng not doing very well. So you don't want to be too bullish on Hang Seng. So you tend to want to look for short opportunity rather than long in a day trading. So you use more of the short DLCs. Correct. To take advantage of the weakness. Correct. Okay. Yeah, because uh, these drivers are weak. Okay, and um, I just want to show you also... Uh, what makes me skew towards more shorts <laughs> in favor of short than long? And if you look at global indices, right? You know, the, between the Wall Street indices and our Asia index, right? The Hang Seng in the last three months uh, wasn't doing well. Okay, they were underperforming the global indices. They were weak, right? So that is why. That's another reason why. I, my decision uh, in day trading is skewed more to shorts than to long. Okay, so you also zoom out from the individual stocks in the index to compare Hang Seng Index with the rest of the indices, yes, right? Like S&P 500, right. NASDAQ, right. and see whether Hang Seng is strong or weak. So with the additional weakness, relatively poorer performances compared to the US index, that will give you more confidence to go more on the short side than the long side. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, now we come to the interesting part. Okay. Okay. Uh, the action, the action, actionable uh, 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 part. All right. Uh, so first of all, I just want to say that I am, you know, running a chat group. You know, a very uh, active chat group, and it's called the DLC chat group. So, so this chat group, right, only trade stocks, Singapore stocks. Right, we talk about Singapore stocks and Hong Kong stocks and also Wall Street indices mm. that has got an underlying DLC. So mm. anything that doesn't have DLC, we don't do it because we okay. only try to exploit the DLC trading, all right? The volatility of, uh, and also the leverage given by the DLC. So this is this check group primary, what we call a DLC check group. Mm. I'll publish my Hang Seng trade plan, day trade plan. So let me give you an example. 10th of May, all right? I said Hang Seng day trade plan. So today, you know, so, so you can see the, 
the, the, the time 0925 a.m., uh, the Hang Seng only start trading 0929, right? So f four minutes before, I already craft out the plan and also my outlook of Hang Seng. So I said, okay, you know, the futures index open flat. So expect the cash to open flat. And today I expect weakness. Mm. All right. I expect the Hang Seng to trade to 19,730. And if it breaks to so two levels, 19,500. Okay. So, uh, but if it goes up, all right, to 20,100, uh, 20, then that is a conviction sell for me. So the three levels to, to work at. And true enough, um, you know, the Hang Seng opened like 19,800 plus plus, all right, and then it, after, after open for a short while, it fell to my target at 19,730. Mm. So that target was hit and I declared I took some profit. And let's take a look at the chart, right? So you could see from the chart, right, the Hang Seng opened high, all right, if, and then it went down close to like um, uh, 100 points. All right, from 19.830 all the way to 19.730, right? So 19.730 is where it was supported and it rebounded all the way to 19.810. So for day traders uh, who follow these trade plans, uh, they could do two things. They could, you know, if they expect the market to be weak, as I predicted, when the market opened, they could have shorted and then they could have covered at 19730 and at 19730 they could have reversed their trade and they bought, right? And then they could have sold at 18, uh, 19, uh, 8, 800. So yeah. So that's how it works. Right. Definitely people want to know how you decide where the support and resistance are because these are the key levels that yeah. you have been publishing in the chat group and uh, probably people really want to know what's the uh, secret behind this. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to review uh, this secret. All right. Yes, so stay secret. with me. Okay. So um, normally, right, I will take a snapshot, right, of the key support resistance. Mm. Okay. And one of the best way to, to know whether it's key support resistance is to use the price and volume distribution chart. Okay. Okay. So so this is the price volume distribution chart over the last five days. So if the market is like ranging, right, you know, you want to know, yeah, you know, it's ranging, you don't know exactly where the real support resistance is. So this price volume distribution chart will tell you, hey, you know, the the the, the key support is about 19,750, uh, mm -hmm. okay? And if you be, have been following my, my trade plans, it's a lot of support level, and resistant or revolve around that level, 19,700, very yes, common one, yeah, yeah. right? Because of this, last five days, right? Majority of the volume was done here at 19, 19, uh, 750 level, okay? So, and, so basically, this yeah. is an indicator in the stock chart which you can activate and display on the chart. Right? Correct. So it's called the price and volume distribution indicator. Correct. And basically, what you want to find the support resistance is where you see on the indicator where the longest volume bar is. That's that correct. Price. That is that. Yeah. Support. So it's it's very simple. Anybody yeah. can follow. Yeah. Just go to price distribution. You know, look at the highest volume. Okay. And price done there. How many? You know, yeah. the most volume done at the, that price. That is the most important. That price. is important price. Okay. So that is what I would call the inflection point. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then. Uh, this is uh, the daily chart. Yep. So on, on the sorry today, the, the chart for today, the price and volume today. So you could see right that you know the volume as the market came down. Remember it came down to nineteen, uh, it hit nineteen seven hundred, then came down to nineteen five ninety. It hit five ninety five ninety. You see a lot of volume was done here. You saw that, yep. and then you see all the accumulation and the short got caught. And it went all the way and came just 10 points away from my 20075. All right, the high was 10 points away, 20065. And then you could see here, right? Can you see on the left? Yeah. The volume, the volume built up. And when the volume built up here, it was the top and it came down. Mm -hmm. All right. So always look at the volume. When too many people get in there, you know, it tends to reverse. Mm -hmm. All right. And when, yeah, so at, at 
at, at, the, at, at the price where the volume is blowing up, all right, it tends to reverse. Okay. That's, yeah. Because okay. there are so many traders or trades done around the area. Crowded. There is some Too memory, crowded. right? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, let's go on. All right. So, so today's trade plan is very challenging, mm. right? Because um, the market moves in a sideways fashion. Mm. Right, so the trend is sideways. So anything that's sideways, right, you know, is tough. All right, and um, so you need to know, right, um, where the. So a lot of people know how to do support resistance, but how to know the real support resistance, right? That's important because real support resistance can be found. All right, so most people, right, they they find the the the, the day high and day low, the top. On the bottom, all right, the pivot point is support resistance. But real support resistance can be found in between bars, in between uh, price movement, in okay. between, all right. They are all embedded somewhere inside. You must go and find it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So today I want to tell you, all right. So the six. So listen to this, all right. So this is like wow. You know, it's like uh, uh, twenty it's, years of experience. Yeah, twenty uh, six years. I'm telling you that. Right. So, but it's very simple, right? Very simple. Anybody can learn it, and and you could see my arrows, right? See these arrows, yeah. All right. So these arrows, right, point to day highs where where in those days where prices were resisted at the high. They keep, you know, they keep coming back. All right. You see this bar here. It went higher, and then the next day it tried again, and you see here it tried again. Try three times, right? It never cried. And finally, when it burst through, it went. Up. And see, you see, this, this, these prices were ranging here, but you can see these arrows here. A lot of high and lows are done at these arrows here. A lot of it are done here. All right? And therefore, right, when the prices move, right, you can see a lot of resistance are always around these, these levels. All right? And when it could not breach this level, it started coming down. 19700, okay, so you could see, right, all these arrows are all pointing at 19700. They're all pointing one arrow, two arrow, three arrow four arrow, five arrows, right? But if you look at, if you look at a natural support resistance, right? Then you will say, you know, maybe the low today can be 19,537. Mm -hmm. But you will not hit 19,537 because it's just too, too uh, sorry, it opened at, at, at 19,537, right? So that is like, you know, the natural uh, support resistance. So today it opens there, okay. opens there. But the question is now, it opens there, if we rebound, how far will it go, right? So now you look back, you saw, wow, you know, it's a long bar up there. But in between the price movement, right, there were a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of support resistance. It was very volatile. Uh, and how do you take profit? How do you know where it's, it will pause and pull back for you to take profit? Okay, that because, kind of thing. Because yeah. you're talking about, right, if it's a day chart, you can just see that, oh, there's a long bar. Correct. But if it's a... 10 minute chart, 5 minute chart, when you zoom in into that day itself, yeah. you will see those resistance and support. Correct. And that's how you take advantage of them to make money okay. from those short term movement. So, but then you must know within the day where, you know, where the support resistance, intermediate support resistance will be. And that was where I said, you know, the resistance, intermediate resistance was, you know, it opened at 19, 530. All right, uh, the resistance is at 19,700 and when it breaks at 19,700, uh, you know, sorry, when it breaks above 19,700, right, it will be 20,075, all right, which was almost, you know, exactly spot on, right there, yeah. Okay. So this is how, you know, you, you do uh, find out, how you find out support resistance, the real, I would, I would say, the real support resistance. Okay. Yeah. There will still be some experience needed, right? right in sorry. this case, right? Because uh, it's a little bit not so obvious as the price and volume distribution where you just find the yes. largest volume. In this case, you need to find where is that level that most of the prices interact. Correct. Right? That takes the some most experience. hit, yeah. Okay. So, so it needs a bit of work, yeah. <laughs> work plus experience. Also, correct, right? yeah. To find the real work. support so, and resistance. Yeah, correct. So, so that is the. I mean, you know, whether it's trading Hang Seng or trading stocks, yeah, you know, the technicals, the techniques are about the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, so this is how this today's is one minute chart, I zoom in, all right? Yeah. Okay. So, so we started off at 19,500, 
Okay, we talked about 19700. So everybody shot at 19700, thinking that it's going to go back down again, but it reversed. All right. So how do you know it reversed? It's by the price a volume chart that I showed, the volume built up a lot and then it started turning. And the minute, you see, the minute it broke above 19,700, right, it went all the way to just 10 points below my conviction self call at 2075, right? So how do you know it's 2075? You know, unless you do your whole work, okay. unless you know where the support, real support resistance is, right? So today, right, you, you could see, right, you know, there's only two areas where there is a significant retracement. 19,700 and 20,75. Alright, only two areas where you can see. And we picked it today. Okay? And if you have, like, you know, use your DLC to, to just short on the top, alright, uh, on those, those, those levels, alright, for example, uh, today the most sensitive uh, HSI uh, DLC to me was CVIW at 92 cent, right? If you have sort of uh, 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 bought it and it went down 150 points, 100, 100, 100 points, right? Uh, you should make about two and a half cents, mm. okay? So, and here you can make at 20060, all right? It, it, uh, 80 cents if you have bought the short DLC and it closed off somewhere off here at 82 half, mm -hmm. right? You make another two and a half cents. Okay. And then you close for the day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how do you know when to say take profit or when do you manage your position if let's say it didn't go your way? Okay, so um, as of everything, all right, when it doesn't go your, in your trade plan, you must always have a stop loss. And you, when you have made profit, you must always have a trading stock okay. to protect your profit. So okay. that's, okay. you know, the, the okay. usual risk management okay. that you have to... Okay. Yeah. So in terms of the stop loss and this that, is it based on a percentage or you still use like support resistance to decide where that... Stock okay, loss so is? if you expect, for example, right, for example, uh, I expect 19, sorry, so, for example, I expect 19,700 to be the first top. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, when, when the market now, say, break and pierce like 19,750 or 800, you know, it may not, um, uh, it, 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 it could be just overshoot. Yeah. All right. But the minute, right, it goes like far beyond those price they predicted, then you know things are different oh, already. It's not right anymore, right? Yeah, <laughs> don't go sit on it, right? So you just have to cover your shorts. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So which means there's still like uh, uh, several levels to allow some overshooting to happen, but if it pierce through everything that you expect, yeah. then it's time to... Correct. Beyond expectations, so you have to... Okay. You have to okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So... Um, yeah, before I go, I just want to say that um, today, like I was saying, for day trading, right, sideways markets is the toughest. Mm. But if you have like a trending market like what you see here, yeah. you know, the, the trend, right, the trend line can predict a lot of bottoms, a lot of tops, a lot of bottom, a lot of tops for you. And that becomes a lot easy, mm. right? The direction is correct. Yeah. Direction easy, the, finding the top and the bottom is easier, right? And uh, yeah, I hope one day, you know, maybe maybe the next session, you know, we can make a video on um, swing trading, all right, using this technique. Yeah. Okay. okay. When it's ranging. Correct. When, uh, it's, when it's going up and down clearly, right? Not, not in the sideways market. Not in the sideways okay. market, yeah. Go to this QR code. Yeah. And, and as well, as the link is included in the description below. You can just, uh, but I understand they need to fill in a, a form first before they get Added to the template. Yes, channel. yes, yes, yes. That's yeah. what you do. You just follow the procedures there. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. exciting because uh, I've not really uh, peeped into how people do day trading and uh, learned quite a lot today from Robin. So thankfully that he's very generous with uh, all of us today. And I think that the best you can do is to really study, uh, join the community of traders and learn from there as well. So thank you for watching. Remember to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and look out for the next one that we will have more trading secrets from Robin in the future.
Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.